go. Go, go, go. Back up, back up. Reverse, reverse, reverse. And welcome back to the Civil Rights Lawyer channel. I'm on the road today in Cincinnati, Ohio. This footage comes to us from Birmingham, Alabama, where we see a police cruiser physically ramming a vehicle that was involved in so-called exhibition driving, which I take it basically just means doing donuts mostly while people film you. This officer is now under investigation by the Birmingham Police Department. Is this legal? Can a police officer ram a vehicle that's doing donuts or whatever else exhibition driving consists of? What constitutional rights are at play? Let's take a look at the footage first and then I'll give you my opinion on it. Go, go. Go, go, go. Back up, back up. Reverse, reverse, reverse! The only information given is that the officer's actions are under investigation. That could pertain to both police department internal policies or it could also pertain to potential constitutional violations. In my opinion, he's most likely looking at some sort of departmental policy violation at best. The potential constitutional violation here would have to fall under the Fourth Amendment. This is similar to incidents where police officers use pit maneuvers to stop vehicle pursuits. The case law says that the Fourth Amendment doesn't even apply up until a certain point, up until there's been a seizure. The case law also says that the seizure doesn't occur until you reach a certain point. Just being chased by the police is not in and of itself a seizure. Being physically caught by the police, that is a seizure. Or being wrecked by the police in some way, that is a seizure. Just like in a foot pursuit, being chased by the police, in and of itself, that's not a seizure. But if they're chasing you and then they shoot you, the shooting is the seizure. That's when they catch you. So seizure, Fourth Amendment applies. No seizure, Fourth Amendment never even gets triggered. Thus, vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle contact at some point is going to become a seizure if, for instance, it wrecks the vehicle or catches the vehicle. Under the Fourth Amendment, seizures must be reasonable. So we have to look at the facts known to the police officer at the time of the seizure. And then we look at the officer's actions in light of those facts to assess reasonableness. What did the officer know here? The driver was doing donuts and driving recklessly. He intended to flee. He was in the process of fleeing. Pedestrians were, were around and they were filming what was happening. There was indeed a potential safety risk due to the actions of the driver. Thus, it's obvious that seizing the driver here under the Fourth Amendment um, is allowable, assuming that a seizure took place because there was both reasonable suspicion and also probable cause to support not only a detainment, but also a warrantless arrest of the driver for a number of crimes. But where the driver got away, if the driver had gotten away, there wouldn't necessarily have been a seizure at all under the Fourth Amendment. But for the sake of assuming that a seizure did take place in the context of ramming a vehicle or using a pit maneuver, that seizure must be performed in a reasonable way. It would be easy to seize a driver just by filling the car full of holes, like Bonnie and Clyde. 
but not reasonable, not under these facts. Another option is to turn this into a high-speed pursuit situation, but that's going to put innocent parties, third parties in danger, or you could just let them go. But again, that's gonna put innocent third parties in danger, both now and potentially in the future. So what about the option of just ramming the car and physically stopping it right now when you have the opportunity to do it? It actually sounds pretty reasonable to me, but I can see where it might be against department rules. Remember though, that department rules, policies, have no bearing at all on whether a constitutional violation has occurred according to the federal courts. And I don't believe that under these facts, at least with the information that were provided, that there was any Fourth Amendment violation here at all. So make sure to subscribe to my email updates at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. I'm putting together some multi-state resources for victims of civil rights violations or just anyone interested that I'll be discussing in the near future. Please make sure to like and subscribe and also let me know in the comments whether you disagree. Debate is healthy. And remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it. I'll see you next time.